Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. We're playing some more White Knights today, and this is not a bad opening hand. This is not a bad opening hand at all. I'm going to keep this opening hand. I think it's actually absolutely fantastic. We have all the lands we need to get to Mighty Exemplar, and we have this guy if we get to four lands, and then we can start dumping mana into it. What are we playing against? We're not playing against goblins again, are we? <laughs> We're not playing against goblins again. Could actually be just your good old-fashioned burn, but I assume if we were playing against good old-fashioned burn, he would have actually played um, some burn spell. But he might do it on our turn as well. That is completely possible, completely a possibility. And ship it through to our opponent's turn. I'm not doing anything else. What does our opponent decide to play? Does he have a burn spell? He does not have a burn spell. Going to his turn, it looks like it is mono red Tron. <laughs> no, a draw, a red, a battle, red Aldrazi. Uh, power equal to the number of colorless creatures you control. Okay, well, that's a weird thing. Playing in the tournament area this time, by the way. Uh, usually I play in the just for fun area because, well, the, like, getting serious area has no one that plays in it. So usually I play in the just for fun area where you play against a melody of decks. Sometimes they're competitive, sometimes not. But I thought I would take the spin and go out to, um, play in the, like, the not so, not so budget area. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna play Knight of the Mellow Grain. We do have double Celestial Flare, so if this guy attacks in, we can just make him sack it. So that'll be a thing, but we're going to do it later. We're going to do it later. And ooh, 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 that's a thing. So when this guy dies, reveal the top card of the library they can put into the battlefield. That's scary. Um, yeah. Yeah, that is a thing that happens. And we're not going to block... I mean, it, it we'll die if we block, so there's no point in us blocking. Keeping up Celestial Flare might not have been a bad idea at this point, though. And he's going to ingest exiling what? What gets exiled? It is going to be... I should have always yielded this. I don't need to see it. It is a Thraben Inspector, which is not the end of the world. Not the end of the world at all. I would actually much rather have Planes, because Planes are nices. And it's going to be Knight Exemplar. I mean, again, we could, in theory... Play a Celestial Flare, hold up Celestial Flare. But if I play Knight Exemplar, I can just literally chump block with uh, Knight of Meadowood. <laughs> Why not? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I have a hunch he's going to probably bolt the Knight Exemplar to get rid of it. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out if he actually does that or not. It would not surprise me. Okay, there we go. Bolt. <laughs> Called it. Yeah, It's kind of product predictable, though. One thing about modern, especially if you're playing a creature-based deck, is there's a lot of removal for creatures, so you kind of need to be aware that that is a thing that will likely happen. That creatures will die as you play them. So, because usually once your opponent, like, they evaluate, like, what's on the table? What do I need? actually need to get rid of? And he's going to get rid of a what? Another Thraven Inspector. All Thraven Inspectors all the time, apparently. And there's Thought Knot Seer. We don't have any way of dealing with that. Well, we do theoretically have a way of dealing with the Celestial Flare. But, so opponent's going to see what's going, what's going on in our hand, which is scary for us. And he's probably going to grab Celestial Flare. Probably a better bet. The other option would be getting rid of this guy. Because this guy dodges Bolt and makes things bigger. Yeah, okay, there you go. He has two options. He had two, two good options. And I think we play the Ghost Quarter... And unfortunately, everything is white-white. So Ghost Quarter is really not very good right now. The thing, though, we could use Ghost Quarter for is theoretically blowing up this thing. Theoretically blowing up that thing. I don't know if I really want to do that, though. I kind of just want to leave Celestial Flare up. But he'll attack with both these guys. What's good, what, what is what will end up happening. So if he attacks with both these guys, he sacks this guy, gets a card for free. Which yeah, is not amazing. Not amazing at all. Um, if we leave, if we play Knight of the Holy Nimbus, well, he has to pay for it, but he has the mana to pay for it, so it's not like it's the end of the world. I think we hold up and. I think we just hold up. Yeah, we just hold up. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. And we'll make him Celestial. We're gonna Celestial Flare him, even though it's not the best option, technically. Technically, I mean, we theoretically we could actually double Celestial Flare by using Ghost Quarter to blow up one of these guys. We'll see what he does. We'll see what our opponent does. So he's probably going to attack him with everything. 
There we go. He attacks with everything. Uh, we will Celestial Flare our opponent. So, ping that. So he's going to blow up this guy and get something off the top of his library, potentially. So, there we go. Something off the top of his library. And it is going to be... It is a Terminate. Well, that's fun. And then we might as well go like this as well. So we're waiting on our opponent. And we're gonna we're gonna second we're gonna double celestial flare. So sack ghost quarter blowing up one of our planes. Tap you for land. What is going on here? <laughs> my my NDGO is really weirdly slow right now. Uh, so, chose that. Yes, we're going to blow up this with Ghost Quarter. Nice thing about Ghost Quarter is it comes into play untapped, whatever land it is. So, you can actually blow something up and go and fetch up lands, which is nice. So, we can fetch up another planes. Tap that planes. Cast Celestial Flare. And our MTGO. My MTGO is really slow right now. Like, amazingly slow. I'm having, like... Well, I mean, I click this planes and this thing to play it, and it's still... Low. Oh, no, it's our opponent's turn. It's not that slow. It's just our opponent's turn. <laughs> That's super funny. And here I am complaining about how slow my MTGO is. Damn you, MTGO. You're so slow. Be faster. Okay, so it's going to be Celestial Flare, our opponent. There we go. He's going to have to sack a second creature. He's probably going to sacrifice the Thought Knot Seer. I would... Eh, actually, no, he'll probably go with this guy. Removal is a removal. So why not get rid of the, the smaller of the two creatures, I guess? And then... Yeah. He has a Terminate... Because you have a terminate, I may as well block this way. Not the best, not the best thing in the world, but it's something we're gonna do. Because he's just gonna terminate next turn as well. He's probably gonna terminate this guy. Mind you, if we play Knight of the Holy Nimbus, he'll probably terminate Knight of the Holy Nimbus. And he's gonna team a Battle Rage, which still gets damage into us. Which I mean, would have been eight damage to us. So that's a thing. We still gain a little bit of life. Not the end of the world. And another reshaper. Okay, so. We play a student for a white, and then I think we play a Knight of the Holy Nimbus because our opponent has to uh, pay two mana to destroy it. So we can kind of like decode our opponent, make them spend more mana than they actually need to. Mind you, they're at one card. They're pretty low. Mind you, we know that they're drawing a, um, a Terminate next turn. Okay, uh, well, ship it to our opponent's turn, see what they do. And then we can always bust, uh, bump this guy up as well. I mean, we can, if we have extra mana, we can always pour it into him to make him bigger. So our opponent is indeed paying for Knight of the Holy Nimbus, and he'll probably terminate right away. That was what I'd guess he'll do. Yep, terminate right away. Can't be regenerated. Um, I don't think you need to pay for Knight of the Holy Nimbus, actually. And do I need to block this? Four, five, six, seven. I might need to block it, but I don't think I'm going to block it. We're going to see what we draw into. Next turn is going to be the make it or break it round. And I think it's the break it round, actually. I think it is. Hmm. Because we can do Paladin. Paladin and this guy can double block here, which I don't think this wins us the game. I don't think this uh, stops at all. Depending on what our opponent plays, depends on if we lose this next round. If he plays anything, anything of uh, importance, we totally die. Destroying lands is a way of dying. <laughs> um, I don't think it actually stops us, though. So, I don't think it actually stops us. I'm surprised you play Stone Rain. Because there's, what, Molten Rain, which does damage as well. That, on the other hand, does stop us. Okay, scoop it up. Concede this game. Go to game two. Save our clock. And go to sideboard against Eldrazi. Red, black Eldrazi. What do we need to do against Red Black Eldrazi? Well, Oblivion Ring comes in. I don't think Witchbang Orb comes in. Uh, Riders of Gavany definitely come in. They are good against Eldrazi because we can just name Eldrazi. Uh, Mind Sensor doesn't work. This doesn't work. This doesn't do much of anything. Um, you, you need to stay in because you dodge Bolt. You are the late game drop, but you do dodge Bolt. Uh, these guys come out because they're, they die to Bolt really quickly, so there's no point in keeping them in. Always watching 
Uh, always watching is good, but it's a little bit expensive against Eldrazi because Eldrazi is a little bit faster, more aggressive than than we need. We need so you know getting the plus one is nice, but I think uh, I don't think we can leave it in. That's for sure. Uh, what else do we need to take out? Faster stuff is always nice. Brave the elements is going to be good, or is it? It is not going to be good. We have to choose a color. Brave the elements can come out, which is <laughs> not, not going to be good at all, because we can't choose. Not a color? <laughs> I want to choose not color. I want to choose Devoid as my color of choice for protection. Not a thing that works, and we're going to play first. Uh, opening hand seems good. We'll keep it. I think it's a good keep. Student of Warfare right away. Second turn, Knight of the Metal Grain. Should be good. Should be good. And we have a Ghost Quarters. We can actually blow up his stuff early if we need to. So go like this. Bam. Bam. If he plays an Eldrazi Temple, first turn we'll play Ghost Quarter and blow it up. I'd rather not him give a, not give him extra mana. Sorry, I'm just drinking water here. So much water, my voice is slowly dying. It's not actually slowly dying. I say this like it's hurting, but it's not actually hurting right now. So against Eldrazi, he goes and fetches up Blood Crypt, pays mana for it, or pays life for it. So what is he playing? Is he going to bolt? No, he's going to hold up. He's going to pretend he is bolt. He is going to Inquisition, though. And Riders of Gavany is probably the best bet for him to pull out of my hand. Because we can name Eldrazi, and then creatures, human creatures we control, which are almost everything, is going to get... Not this guy, unfortunately. No, it's going to be Knight of the Metal Grain. I guess Slow Down Tempo is better. Technically better. So, going to our turn. Always Watching is really good, actually, right now. So, I think what we do... We play Student of Warfare. Sure, we have another 1-1, one -one, which is nice. And then we're going to level up this guy. Sure, and then swing for combat. Go to combat, attack with all creatures, which is just a single guy, and then go to our opponent's turn. And then next time we're going to play Always Watching. Which is going to be really good because these guys will just get bigger. And if we level this guy up twice after that, then he'll be out of bolt range, which is, is really the concern. Bolt is the concern right now, for me at least. So opponent doesn't have a two drop, which is good for me. Really good for me. Uh, well, let's play Ghost Coder because he knows we... And I think we just dump Always Watching. Bam, bam. And a Ghost Quarter. Always Watching. These guys get plus one, plus one in Vigilance, so we can just swing in right now. <laughs> go, go, uh, Student of Warfare. Learn how to fight. Learn how to be students of Warfare. Go. And then going to our opponent's turn, shipping it over. He's going to bolt the guy that already has one counter on him, which is eh, it's an okay idea, I guess. It's an okay idea. Um, next turn we're gonna play. Next turn we have an option. Next turn we can either put enough counters on Student of Warfare to make him uh, four four, so outside of bolt range, or we can play Riders of Gavany. I think we're gonna put him outside. Uh, well, he has Terminate in the deck as well. He has removal, and he's just not playing anything. Or we can play Knight Exemplar. <laughs> That's not a bad idea either. So I think we actually do that. I think we play Knight Exemplar. It doesn't go outside of bolt range, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's still in bolt range, but it is going to make this guy a 3-3 right now, and we might as well, oops, cancel, we're going to go to combat, swinging in with this guy, and then our, own, our opponent's end step, we're going to make him a, uh, we're going to give him a counter. Oh, no, I don't do it as a sorcery, so I'm going to do it on my second main phase. So, swing in for three damage, opponent is going to bolt, oh, no, terminate, there's terminate, which we knew was a thing, we knew it was a possibility. So, we're going to do two damage to our opponent. Our opponent is playing the control game right now, which is fine, technically. <laughs> it's totally fine. And go to our opponent's turn. So, we can make this guy a 4-4 four, for four, strike, and our opponent scoops it up. Okay, here we are, game three. I um, got really excited. I actually thought that we had won that last game, but apparently it's not. So, there's a bunch of editing that had to happen to make this, uh, this deck tech visible for you guys. Anyways, until next time. No, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about nonsense. I think we can keep this opening hand. Double pump spells is not amazing, but I think we're going to keep it. I think our opponent just didn't think he was going to be able to get the tempo and was just worried about burning his clock away. Because, I mean, if he doesn't draw into the stuff... Oh, uh, what does he take? He probably takes uh, Knight of the Nimbus or, or Knight of Holy Nimbus or this guy. These are the two options. These are the two options. Can't take this guy, which doesn't really matter. He's not gonna, He's not going to care about it. Taking one of these two guys is going to be the better bet. Whole, uh, Honor of the Pure is also nice, but I think it's going to be one of these two. 
gonna be one of these two. What are you guys? Oh, he's gonna take he's gonna take Honor the Pure. Which is not a bad option as well. I mean it makes all of our stuff bigger, but yeah, it's not a bad option. It is it is a decent option. That being said, I mean always watching, as soon as we draw a third land, we're gonna drop always watching anyways. So it's probably gonna be probably oh, yeah, nice. He has the Vengevine guy. So I think it's gonna be this is whenever he becomes blocked. Hmm. Not when he blocks. When he becomes blocked, he does that ability. Which is fun. And I think we actually... Hmm. I really want to Ghost Court of this thing, to be quite honest. Just because getting two colorless mana for Eldrazi is really not fun for me. Not fun. I mean, there's basically three mana right there. I think we're going to go this way, though. We're just going to make our opponent... Because this can only be two mana for Eldrazi spells. Um, So he can't... He'd have to like, actually use up all of his mana to not to block and kill this thing. So, if that makes any sense. Or he can Lightning Bolt it. Pay two mana and then Lightning Bolt it, <laughs> technically. Or he can Terminate it. Or Collective Brutality it. Because it actually destroys it. Collector Brutality, giving it minus two, minus two, actually theoretically destroys it. By theoretically, I mean it totally does destroy it, so that's a thing that happens. Okay, so Eldrazi. Eldrazi, Eldrazi. So, we... what? Yeah, he's gonna ingest. What is he gonna... what is he exiling? He's exiling a Plains, which is not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Knight Exemplar is really nice, but I don't think we're gonna play it right yet. I'm really tempted to play Always Watching really tempted to play it quite honestly because it's a little bit better mana efficiency and then next turn when we play like metal grain or something like that it becomes a 3-3 which is a little bolt range i think we're gonna do that we can take the one damage from this thing it's not the end of the world so that's what we're gonna do always watching comes down again the other option would have been to play this guy ghost quarter this if we would have drawn the planes we would have done that we would have ghost quartered this thing away so we take a damage from our opponent, which is fine. He exiles what? I'm going to always yield to this. Always yield. And it's another planes. Well, not necessarily the best thing for us. We kind of wanted that planes. And then... <laughs> this is the one downside of this deck. Having the ghost quarters in it is good in theory, but we only, we're running two of them because almost everything is like white, white or white, white white <laughs> everything is just like oh we just need white all the time white and i don't want to play knight exemplar because he's just gonna bolt it right away we could play knight of the metal grain that is not a terrible idea and now our opponent scoops the match because we're thinking too much well i guess theoretically i win against eldrazi it's um it was an interesting game. <laughs> Until next time, though, my name is Adrian. This is my Giant Monster Games. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to game like a giant monster. Thanks for watching the videos here on Giant Monster Games. If you want to support the channel directly, we now have a Patreon page which you can go and become part of the broader Giant Monster Games community. Additionally, if you want to see some other awesome videos, you can click right here or right here.